Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, the Bald Explorer. This is a continuation of my story. It's a, it's a, it is actually a lovely day outside and I wish I was out filming. Uh, unfortunately, I've got to stay inside because I'm waiting for a delivery and um, I have to sign for it. So I thought today I would do another my story. And this one is probably going to be in several parts because it's a complicated story. And let me just say, I think the diplomatic way of saying this is that um, people's memories may differ in how this came about. So I can only give you my account of it. It's complicated because a number of things came about and um, not every part of it was as satisfactory as it may sound on the, uh, at the beginning. So this is the story of how my, I got really my children's television program, Snug and Cozy, off the ground and onto children's ITV in 1996 and 1997. But we start the story in 1994. But even then, we go back a little bit to the times that I was telling you about in um, the earlier part, in 92 and 93, when I was starting to make my videos, or rather my films, on 16 millimeter film. And if you remember, I had made a ghost story um, with the Sussex Film Productions, and then I'd made a tarmac safety film at the local quarry. And two of those, those two things were sort of instrumental really for the next stage of what I was going to do. So on the one hand, um, two, two things came out of that. One is, I think I showed you when I was doing the tarmac film, or it may have been not the tarmac film, I think it was the Sussex, the ghost film. Um, there was a picture in the paper of me holding a camera. And a very dear friend of mine from the past got in touch with me and he said, Richard, I've recognised you in the paper from your hands. And he said, you know, I hadn't actually recognised you from your face. I think probably because I was wearing my rather unusual glasses at the time, my daddy glasses as I called them. Um, and this was my friend Nigel Cooper, who I had met at Lodge Hill many years earlier um, in the 80s, uh, in the early 80s, in fact, when we did the summer schools uh, as actors. And we were on the course doing um, learning about acting and all of that on the, on the when I suppose really as students. Anyway, it may have even been just before the 80s, it may have been sort of 70 79 something like 78 79 anyway a long time earlier than than the 1990s so i met up with nigel and i said uh, how are you how's life you know what are you doing i told him that what i was doing i was still working on the bill i was doing some entertaining stuff i had been to mime school and all of those things and nigel had had this uh, very interesting and um great career as a paramedic. He was in the ambulance service um, and he, he enjoyed it, but he was a little bit dissatisfied with the politics of the ambulance service. As I know, a lot of people in any large institution do find that the politics of it is a bit irritating. And uh, so I said to him, I said, well, I'm making this ghost film, but we pretty much shot everything. I said, but it'd be great to give you a little part in it. And I can't remember, I think he was, I think I gave him a little part, um, I just invented something to put him in, but I can't remember exactly what it was, a delivery man or something. I, I really can't remember now. But I also said to him, I said, look, Nigel, because we, we just clicked. We had the same sense of humour and all of that. And I said to him, I said, it's really weird that we should meet now after all these years, because I've had this idea to make a children's television program called Snug and Cozy, about two aliens who crash land on the uh, earth and have adventures, a sort of Laurel and Hardy in spacesuits. 
And he loved that idea and he said, oh, he'd love to, love to get involved. And I said, well, we, you know, I would be snug and you could be cozy and, and, and all of that. So he said, well, where did the idea come from? I said, well, it's funny because I work on the bill. I was driving up one day to go to work on the bill as an extra, a background PC. And I said, I went past this furniture store and I've seen it many times. I can't remember the name of the store. It's something like Hammond's Furniture. But there's a sub line it used to say something like snug and cozy furniture. And I had thought as I drove up there musing as I often did in the traffic, I said, well, it'd be funny if a couple of aliens crashed in there and thought that's the name of people and adopted those name and went into disguise uh, as, you know, oh, hello, I'm snug and this is cozy, thinking that would be typical Earth names. Well, this idea started to grow on me a bit more about, well, what if they did crash into a furniture store and adopt those names? Why did they crash? And then I thought, well, I suppose a couple of uh, comedy aliens uh, who drive in a spaceship, which is very classic B-movie 1940s style, um, might have hit an asteroid and that would have taken them off course and they crash into the earth and they happen to crash into this furniture store. And I thought, where would they were going? Well, I reckon they must have been going on holiday to an interstellar holiday camp like the Butlins on Alpha Centauri or something like that. So that was, that was my initial um, thoughts on a, a plot, if you like, or a reason to have them on Earth. And then because their spaceship is smashed up, they're sort of stuck here and they have lots of adventures. And that was the initial concept. And uh, so I then went away, really, uh, and wrote the script, which um, involved them crashing down. And I thought, well, if they, they leave the furniture store pretty hastily and they find themselves in an allotment. And the thing about being in an allotment is there's lots of sheds garden sheds where obviously the gardeners keep their tools. But to Snug and Cozy, they look remarkably similar to the chalets that they were going to stay on their Alpha Centauri interstellar theme park on another planet that they were headed. And so instead of worrying about rebuilding the spaceship and taking off, they think, well, this is where we'll have our holiday, in the allotment. Not really understanding that that was what uh, what an allotment really was. So again, you know, that, that sort of misunderstanding I thought kids would find hilarious. The other thing that was important to me was that at the time on kids TV, there was a, a series, an animated series, um, stop frame animated series called Pingu about a penguin. People may have remember it. And this penguin, of course, not being a real uh, not being a human, didn't speak in English or any language. It had its own language, which I suppose was penguinese. I don't know. Um, but it would, it sort of had this meep meep type um, noise that it made. And I thought, snug and cosy, these two aliens, obviously coming from their planet, which incidentally I decided was called Squodge, um, they would have their own language and it would be, uh, they would understand it, of course, but to anybody on the planet and particularly the audience witnessing their adventures, it would be in gobbledygook. So they wouldn't have a clue what it was. So we, later on, we developed this language as a sort of session where you got to ship it with your cozy, you slipping, slam, slap a dough, you nimpy. And I decided that Cozy was going to be, which would be played by Nigel because he was bigger, he would be the sort of Hardy character, um, Oliver Hardy character, and he would be in charge. And on his uh, spacesuit, he would have these sergeant stripes, which he would point to and go, look, I'm in charge. And uh, of course, I was going to be the Stan Laurel character, who was a lot more dopey and actually thinner than Nigel. And so I would be playing that sort of gormless character getting into mischief. And between the two, it was this comedy slapstick. That was the notion of it. Um, so 
We had the concept, I'd written the, the script, uh, we needed an allotment. We also needed um, somewhere to have a bit of a studio mock-up so that we could film the intro. I wanted to, I wanted to make this pilot episode so that we could, two things, one, sell the story and the concept of Snug and Cozy. The second, to show that as a filmmaker, I could make the series. Now I'd been brought up on things like Bagpuss and uh, uh, Gordon uh, Murray's Puppets, um, Trumpton, Chigley and all of that. And I had realized that these guys had made their own programs and sold them on to places like the BBC. It hadn't been the television companies who made them, they made them independently. And this is what I wanted to do. So all that concept and all those ideas were sort of running around my head at this time. But my experience with the filmmaking on 16 mil, which I loved, I knew from the ghost film that we'd made and the tarmac film, it was very expensive. Now this is, there was video of course, around, but buying video cameras or renting video cameras and the edit suites was hugely expensive back in those days. It was right at the early stage of analog video. We, digital video was yet to come into existence. Um, so that there was no way I could do it on that. It had to be on film if at all, uh, other than low budget sort of VHS and it would just look rubbish. I, I wanted it to look absolutely as best we could make it. And I knew that 16 mil would look brilliant, but it would cost. Now, in comes the second element to this story that made it possible. And that was in the Sussex film productions and the Tarmac film, there was a, a chap who was very much in interested in what I was doing and was helping called Philip and very nice bloke and we got on reasonably well um, and in fact it was Philip's son who was one of the boys in the tarmac film who came a cropper um, in I think Philip's son was the one that got stuck in the sand when we were filming that so we got on really well well he came to me one day and he said I've got a proposal to put to you. And I said, oh yeah. He said, there's a friend of the family called Joyce, who is a lady in her, I think in her mid to late sixties, who was a retired, she'd retired from her business, had a very successful business dealing in chemicals in which they bought large quantities of chemicals and then they would um, redistribute them in smaller bottles. I, you know, I don't really know much more than that, but they would buy in large quantities and uh, put them into smaller containers and things and then sell them to wherever they needed to be. And they'd been very successful and she had a bit of money left over. And she was a friend of the family of Philip and wanted to help him out. Now, from what I understand is that she didn't want to just give him the money because I think she felt that just doing that, he may spend it on well, you know, whatever one spends money on, you know, going to the cinema and doing whatever. But she wanted to invest in him so that whatever the money got spent on, it would further his career and give him a chance in, in, in life. I think she had seen him floating about not knowing what he wanted to do. That was the impression that I got. And uh, so he said that she's interested in investing him some money in him if he's involved in the project. And he said, I'd love to get involved in something that I was doing. And I had told him that I was interested in making this children's television program um, and wanted to make the pilot with the potential of making a television series. So he said, well, that would be, I'm sure would be something that Joyce would love to um, get involved because it would further his career and there would be something on the back of it. So I, I was a bit wary about this because it's taking somebody else's money. Well, we had a meeting with Joyce and 
there was £8,000 on the table. And I knew that this would be about the right sort of money to make this children's television pilot actually possible. So I had to think long and hard about this because I was aware that the concept of Snug and Cozy, the characters, the rights, if you like, belonged to me. And if it was eminently successful, I would be sharing that success with other people. And I had to work out how I felt about that. And of course, when you're doing these sort of things, you know, people help you up the ladder and you've got to, you know, you can't just dismiss them and run away. However, you, you've got to be aware that, I don't know how to put this diplomatically really, but you've got to be aware that certain, certain criteria have to happen because we're all helping one another. So I said to um, Joyce, who was really going to be the sleeping partner of this three partner company, if we set it up, that she wanted to invest the money in, that it had to be understood that the rights to the characters was mine because we, th if we set up this company, which we, we called Cozy Productions, this company, you know, the TV thing may not happen at all. That might, it might be that nothing happens and, and it's most likely that nothing would happen. But that's what I was going to make. And I didn't want anyone to feel that I was taking the money and making my project. And then if it didn't happen, which, you know, the chances of getting into television and just offering a pilot was pretty remote, let's face it. I didn't want them to feel that that was, I'd wasted all the money. So that was an agreement that I needed to make absolutely certain that they didn't mind that. But while we did that, we would rent an office and we would see if we could get some commercial work so that Philip and I, in the meantime, would have some filming stuff to do and it wouldn't matter if the TV series didn't work because that would be, in a way, something to show uh, a, a showreel. It would be a way of show, demonstrating what we could do. So that was very much the, uh, the idea. And everybody agreed to this, that it, that it may not happen and if it didn't happen. Also, of course, there was the possibility that if it did happen, then of course we would concentrate on making, on making these programs and all three of us would benefit from that, from the profits thereof. And so that was, that was going to be a um, great thing. Um, it could also uh, be that we may be in a situation where the TV programme and this is what really did happen, but I didn't know it was going to happen and had no hope that it was going to happen, that they would only employ Nigel and I as actors and they would want to make it and that the production company, our production company, would have no um, jurisdiction in it. And that I would, of course, negotiate um, a deal in which in order for Nigel and I to act in this series, if another television station was going to make it, or production company was going to make it, that Cozy Productions and the partnership would get uh, an element of uh, profit from that. So it would, we wouldn't just run and leave them in the loop. Um, well, I can tell you, Television is a, a dreadful uh, business and there did come a point, and I will tell you about this, where I was pushed up against the wall, not physically, not literally, where I was told by the executive at the television station that we uh, eventually went with when we hadn't signed the contract because there were things in the contract that were agreed that never uh, that we had agreed not in the contract verbally and then when I read the contract wasn't in and there was all this problem uh, that eventually I hadn't signed the contract and the, the principal day of photography was the next day of the principal first day of photography and everything was up in the air and eventually I was told because I kept saying these things we've agreed to is not in this contract I was told well do you want to be on television or don't you I'll tell that in more detail next time uh, because that was a, a, an awkward situation. But um, 
so it was it was this whole thing and you can see I'm even now trying to sort of get this so that it comes out right because in in the future in the future of this this early partnership things didn't go well and I know that I think people felt that I let people down in order to further my career and I think that people don't know the the truth of the situation well let's say my version of the truth um, to quote Meghan Markle um, my version of events may seem very different from the version that other people are involved in it's a complicated process but I'm determined to sort of put it on the record on how it came about so as I say this will probably come out in several videos but this that's enough for the first bit so we had this production company I had a script we had the potential to make this children's television pilot the next p stage of it was the making of it and I'll tell you about that next time thanks so much for watching don't forget to follow like and subscribe become a patron and I will see you on the next video. In the meantime, I do hope to make use of this wonderful sunshine and get out and explore this wonderful country. Till next time, bye-bye.